there, welcome to Football Everyday. I'm your host, Zach, in the studio with me, we've got the usual Football Everyday crew, Brian Martin, Jack Dev Singh. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. Welcome. Before we kick off our chat, just want to give a uh, contest and brief mention. Send yourself a chance to win some Adidas footwear. Uh, in fact, the late, a pair of the latest Adidas battle pack footwear worth up to 800 ringgit. All you have to do is send in uh, a photograph of yourself or a video selfie of yourself and your pals. And join the World Cup, send it to football at the star.com.my. Alternatively, you can tweet us at switchup.tv. <coughs> All right, well, today's an off day in the World Cup, but there's no rest for us here on Football <laughs> Every Day. Anyway, there's plenty of news for us to get through. So, lads, mate, biggest news of the weekend, right, has to be the devastating injury to Neymar. Now, I thought it was Van Hal making a bid for Rodriguez. <laughs> Spoken like a yeah, proper yeah. Man United fan. Anyway, you know, uh, the news has come out that Neymar feared that he was paralyzed, very dramatic, he couldn't feel his legs and all his business. What I want to ask you, Brian, is how are Brazil going to cope without their talismanic striker? Well, first of all, I'd like to address the question of injustice of it all, okay? Mm. If you look at the game, I think the Brazilians committed more fouls than the Colombians. Yeah, that's and brutal. And if you look at Rodriguez, yeah. the main man for Colombia, he was chopped down time and time again, mm -hmm. and the one time he actually committed a foul, he was booked. Yes, yes. So that's injustice to me. Okay, mm -hmm. but having said that, yeah, that was a bad foul on Neymar, mm. and uh, you know, you wouldn't want to wish it on your worst enemy. No, you want no. your best players playing in a World Cup semi-finals. Yeah. Um, and the onus is on uh, the other strikers in the Brazilian team. Mm -hmm. They haven't been performing well so far. Mm -hmm. You know, people like Joe, people like Fred, yeah. people like Hulk. Mm. None of them have actually been performing. The onus now on this tree on this trio mm. to actually step up to the game. Well that would surely send shivers down the spine of any Brazilian fan having to rely on the likes of those three. <coughs> but Jack mate, I mean, you know, we're talking about Neymar, everyone's going on about Neymar, but well, what poor Thiago Silva? I mean, it's a massive miss without their captain. Uh, I think that's being overlooked right now. I think when you look at the Brazilian team who's actually which is actually more noted for the names that they have in the back line mm. rather than their, their forward line. Yeah. Uh, them missing Thiago Silva will be a big blow. Mm. Uh, he, he together with David Lewis have got this chemistry going. Uh, and uh, you know, the question is, you don't even we don't even know who's going to step into the fold yeah. uh, to replace uh, Thiago. Mm -hmm. And against the Germans, who are just meticulous and efficient in all categories of how they play the game, yeah. uh, Brazil is really up against it. You know, the, the other thing is missing Neymar basically means that they don't have that target man up front. Mm -hmm. yeah. The yeah. guy that's going to relieve the pressure is able to, to draw defenders and you know mm -hmm. carry the play yeah. forward. Yeah. So, you know, the other question mark is who's going to do that role for Brazil because the way the team set up, it's just too defensive. I know, it, it's scary. Well, well, you know, we might be able to see what Fred has to offer. But, you know, you mentioned German efficiency, <coughs> Jack. Uh, mm -hmm. funny, funny you should mention that because uh, they, they've been going on about the efficiency things uh, in the press today. Walking Lowe's calm, organized clinical squad are apparently drawing on strengths of past national teams. Now, Brian, um, does this bode well for the Germans, the fact that they're going back to the old efficient ways, quietly getting through? It stages? does. If, if you look at the, the German team that has progressed to the semi-finals, mm. they're probably the most consistent, you know? Yeah. And they have grinded out those one nails. Mm. Um, I think the most impressive facet of the German team is their defence. Mm. Um, Manuel Neuer and, and company, uh, I, I think it's going to be tough to breach that defence. Yeah. Uh, and without Neymar up front for Brazil, mm. I don't see that happening. Ah, mm. it, it, it's very tricky. Well, well, Jack, they're all singing from the same book, uh, the uh, songbook, are uh, the Germans, mm -hmm. talking about calm and, you know, organisation. And it's their fourth semi-final in the row. Now, we, yeah. we, we've talked about Neymar being a massive miss. No such problems in the German camp. So how do you see this one panning out? You know, I think uh, it's Germany's to lose. Uh, them being, them getting to where they are right now, mm. Uh, and given that their squad is at full strength, mm -hmm. and they only get better as they've been playing uh, with more consistency, and you know, I think they've come to grips as to what they need to do and to handle the expectations very well. Yeah. I think it's Germany's to lose in terms of getting to the final, but it's home ground advantage. You know, the Brazilians. You know, it's like the wounded animal case. You know, they tend yeah. to rise to occasion. If there's any time for them to do that, it'll be that game. I tell you what, it, it's set up to be an absolute cracker. Well, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some other news circling around the World Cup at the moment. So keep it locked right here on Football Every Day. All in or nothing. 
it's a battle cry. Call to arms. The only way to live. The only way to play. It fuels them into battle. They step onto the field wearing war paint. Unleashing speed, energy and control. Bearing the marks of those that know there is only one way. Hunt or be hunted. Fear or be feared. Evolve or die. Black or white. Welcome back to Football Everyday. Well, it's an off day in the World Cup, of course. Chance for us all to get some much needed sleep. But I tell you what, there's still plenty of news circulating the World Cup now, now, Bri. They're still talking about it. You know, for the Netherlands, much is being made about Tim Krul and his extraordinary first contribution to this World Cup. In case you've been on Mars, well, Tim Krul, he made an absolute storming entry into the World Cup by saving two penalties in the shootout against Costa Rica. Now, Brian, this wasn't the wobbly legs of Grobler or Jersey Dudek, but apparently, according to some, fairly naked aggression mm -hmm. in the faces of the mm -hmm. opposition. Now, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you see this one? Aggression um, or gamesmanship, mate? I, I think neither. I, I don't think it's games, gamesmanship. Mm. I, aggression, yeah, to a certain extent, but mm. I think well within the rules of the game. Yeah. You know, if you look at in the past how the goalkeepers have tended uh, tend to intimidate opponents, mm -hmm. That's exactly what Tim Krul did. Mm -mm. You know, uh, people make it out that it was like a stroke of genius on the part of Van Hal mm -hmm. bringing on Tim Krul. Yeah, it was inspired, but it was planned. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, the post-match interview, Van Gaal actually admitted that they looked at the Costa Rica penalties against uh, Greece. Yeah, and Tim Krul mm -hmm. was the one who actually analysed every single penalty taker. Mm -hmm. So he knew he didn't know exactly where they were going to put the penalties, but he guessed right every time for five for four kicks. He mm -hmm. guessed right. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, I mean he, he intimidated his opponents, mm. but was it within uh, the spirit of the game? Was it within the laws that we have? Yes. What's your thoughts on this, Jack? You agree? You know, every goalkeeper will try and get the edge, especially one that is coming out cold into the pitch. He, yeah. That's his first uh, action in the World Cup yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you up against. Uh, in a very tense situation, mm. um, you know. But uh, you know, I tend to think that as the penalty takers for Costa Rica, I think they have got a lot more on their heads uh, than what Tim Krul is yeah, doing. Right. There's so much pressure to put the yeah, kicks in, yeah. and if you look at you know, the, the, the four kicks that they took, they were all actually good, yeah. good strikes. Yeah, yeah. It's just that Tim Krul managed to yes, guess right. two of them right. So. Mm. Him coming you know, on really didn't yeah, manage to spook the Costa Rica. You know, I don't. They are professional footballers. I think you know the occasion. You know the pressure of the occasion. The moment you, mm. you, you, you need to put in those those shots. I think those will weigh more heavily on the shoulders of the players than what Tim Krul is doing. And I don't think if you look at the facial expressions of any of all the Costa Rican players, mm. none of them were faced by what Tim Krul was doing. They were just mm. concentrating on what they had to do. Yeah, yeah, brilliant stuff. Well. My two pennies worth, Tim Cool, you did a great job. Okay, well, well Brian, mate, you know, it's still on Holland. Now, <coughs> word is out that, uh, you know, Holland are maybe a tad over reliant on Iron Robin's menace. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you react to this this bit of info? You think that's true, Fair Cop? Uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that uh, Robin has been the danger man for Holland yeah. right from the first game. Mm -mm. All right. But they've other quality players in the Dutch team, you know, mm. let's be forget, you have Robin Van Persie, they have uh, Wesley Snyder, yeah, uh, yeah. even Huntelaar to come on as, mm. a, as a super sub. Mm. Um, I, I think that Van Hal has prepared his teams very well, probably the most meticulous clo coach in this tournament, mm -hmm. and um, he knows there are certain limitations to what his players can do, mm. you know, and um, if if Robin were for some reason or another to have a bad day in the semi-final, I think there'll be other players stepping up to the plate. Okay, fantastic stuff. Mm. Well, well, quickly, Jack, just before we head off, I do want to talk about Argentina. We talk about Holland relying on uh, 
Messi, there are plenty of articles going on about Argentina and, and building everything around Messi now. What, what do you think of this? Is it a good ploy for the Argies? Have they got anything else? Well, it's common sense, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if you have one of the best players in the world, uh, players who can actually make a difference, mm. and if you look at the Dutch team, you know, Robin is basically like the only guy who's in the starting eleven who can consistently bring the ball forward and threaten defences. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, you know, tap that ability in any squad that you have. And when you see Argentina play the way that they do, you know, everything is going through Messi. It's yeah. the same. You know, they did it with Maradona. You know, when you have world-class players in your team, especially on the attacking front, you know, a lot will be channeled through them. So well, it doesn't surprise me. You know, they, they, they're missing Adrian Bia Maria, Aguero's out so quickly. Can you can you see them overcoming the Dutch without the loss of these two? I and mean, with the loss of these two, right? Yeah, well, it'll be Angel touch and go. Adrian has been brilliant. He's yeah. been brilliant, but you know, the one thing you've learned in, in big games, especially when it comes to World Cup, is never underestimate the quality of the World Cup mm. stars. Okay. Fantastic stuff. Well, well, lads, thank you very much. Brilliant stuff. Just before we go, we want to give our contest a little bit of a shout out. Now, look at these entries about to come up. This has been a brilliant entry by Mr. Charon Powell Gill. Thank you so much for the, for these lovely photos. <coughs> now, Charon Powell, he's a very lucky man. He's been in Brazil for almost a whole month, enjoying the whole tournament. This is what he had to say. And I'll tell you what, he's got a Malaysian flag in tow as well. So check it out. This is Charon Powell's photographs. Fantastic lucky man there, Charm Paul. I wish I could have been with you in the stadium. Now, now, Jack, man, does yeah. that make you <coughs> feel a bit sad that you sat here on the yeah, couch instead of over there, mate? You know, it it brings back very nice and pleasant memories from yeah. during my two weeks in, yeah. in Rio. Uh, it is, you know, what the pictures show is yeah. exactly what you know anybody who has who's been to the World Cup is actually experiencing or has experienced. Uh, the images you've seen in the picture is exactly what most people would have seen and felt. So you, the you actually did see groups of yeah. Malaysian fans. And you know, yeah, I, I mean, think the Malaysian flag. Yeah. You know, we, we saw it on telly at the Germany yeah. game. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it was one another game that I was at. I can't remember which one it was. And I saw a cross from the grandstand I, where I was seated. And there was a Malaysian flag flying. Uh, so yeah. there are a lot of Malaysians around. And we, you know, during our journey in Rio, I mean, we actually bumped into a couple of groups who were there. So is that the only way Malaysia is going to get to the World Cup. I think that you can only see the fags and the officials in the World Cup. <laughs> there <are> no hope <laughs> for the Malaysian football t team making it. Ah, well, you know, well maybe in the next World Cup we're going to be the ones with the yeah. flag over there, and there'll be somebody else showing our photos on this very show. Anyway, that's us done for today. Until tomorrow, enjoy football. <laughs>